We have discussed angular momentum qualitatively so far. Now develop a theory of formal theory of angular momentum. Uh, we have uh, considered the, we have actually derived some uh, operator formalism of angular momentum also. You can check my playlist. Now if there are two angular momentums, J1 and J2, where J1 forms a complete subspace and J2 forms another complete subspace and components of this J1 and J2, they commute with each other. This is the general commutation relations of the, com uh, I mean, between the components of J. This symbol is called Levy C beta symbol. This is epsilon i j k. If uh, the sequence is maintained, that means if i j k comes here, like if j i j j and j k is here, then this epsilon i j k will give us plus one. But if this is j and this is i, for example, if this is j one j and if this is j one i and this is j one k then this would be epsilon j i k so epsilon j i k means j i k so, so the sequence is not maintained the sequence must be i j k or j k i or k i j always counterclockwise so in that case if uh, here is j and here is i and here is k so this will produce a minus sign here and this commutation relation also holds for this J2 angular momentum value. Now, I'd like to say one thing that this J is often called, called the total spin of the quantum mechanical system. By spin, we mean S. Uh, for example, for electron, S value would be half H cross. And this spin is actually not um, the spin we can assume about the spinning of the basketball. This is not like that. This spin does not have any uh, classical analog. And this J is equal to for a quantum mechanical system, orbital angular momentum L and the spin angular momentum, which is the intrinsic angular momentum of the system these two angular momentum will combine and give us j and this j is called the total spin of the system for example if we consider a system with two electrons then for each electron there will be l1 and s1 s1 and for electron 2 there will be l2 and s2 this L1 plus S1 will give us small j1, L2 plus S2 will give us small j2, this j1 plus j2 will give us total j, that is the total spin value of the two electron system. Now we have, in order to develop the theory, we have two options. We have two choices of basis. First basis would be J1, J2, M1, M2, which means this comes or these are the quantum numbers associated with these operators. Sometimes J1 and J2 are understood and only M1, M2 are written. These are the eigenvalue equations for J1, J2, J1, Z and J2, Z. Let's see what is the second option. This is my second option, which tells us that this base is made of the quantum numbers associated with these operators. Sometimes J1 and J2 are understood and we are left with Jm only. This is a general relation. We have proved this in my angular momentum playlist series. You can check this out. This J square equal to this one. And the eigenvalue equations for 
all these four operators are given by equation 20a 20b 20c and 20d now we know that j square always commute with jz but you can verify it using equation 19 also it's very easy just one or two lines will give you this answer now j square also commute with j1z and j square also commute with j2z i mean sorry it does not commute with j1z and it does not commute with j2z because of cross terms i have approved this equation 22a here for 22b the thing is the same We need to prove that j square j one z minus j one z j square is not equal to zero. So first, I have written the definition of j square. Multiply it with j one z, but we need to keep in mind that these are matrices. So in matrix multiplication, order is important. We need to maintain that. And then. Minus J one Z operating from front here J one Z operating from uh, right side here J one Z operating from left side. Now I am just multiplying. These are uh, matrix matrix multiplication actually. Now this is J one square and J one Z and as J square commute with J Z so. definitely j1 square commute with j1 z so this term and this term will cancel out similarly this one and this one will cancel out similarly this one and this one will cancel because i have just told you that um, one in one basis in uh, the subspace formed by j1 components and the subspace subspace formed by j2 component there are uh, components of j1 and j2 which form that subspace and those components uh, they commute with each other so in place of j2 z j1 z i can easily write it j1 z j2 z so this becomes this so this term and this term cancel out but this terms odd these terms will survive because of these relations so j square and j1 z will not commute j square and j2 z will not commute but what is the physical significance of it now we have two bases one basis correspond to this one this is my option 1 i should have written it above and this is my option b as this uh, this j square is not i mean it's not commuting with j1 z this means we cannot add j1 z or j2 z here because as j1 z or j2 z does not commute with j square we will not be able to have simultaneous eigen ket of j square and j1 z or j2 z so how can we construct the bases if we do not have simultaneous eigen kets similarly we cannot add j square in the this basis also 